Hey, what's going on guys? This is ETA Prime back here again. Today I want to show you how to run Android Auto on your Raspberry Pi 3 connected to a touchscreen. So I got this idea from my buddy over at Nova Spirit Tech. If you're into single board computer projects, definitely check his channel out. It's got some great stuff over there. As you can see, the touchscreen is fully functional. You do have the option to play music. Now this is all connected to a Raspberry Pi 3 kind of mounted behind here. I'll show you how I did it in a second. I just kind of wanted to go over a couple features here. We also have navigation. When I hit this button, it would show you exactly where I was, so I kind of skipped over it. Just search for something. Now you can't pinch to zoom or anything like that, but you do have these two buttons over here. And it's pretty snappy for being on a Raspberry Pi 3. Now in order for this to work, you do have to have a phone that supports Android Auto. You're going to be plugging your phone into the Raspberry Pi 3, which is in turn plugged into this touchscreen or whatever touchscreen you choose. And it's kind of an interface to control Android Auto from your phone. So on the back here, I have a Raspberry Pi 3 mounted to a seven inch touchscreen. We got HDMI, USB to the touchscreen interface itself, power in 3.5 millimeter out, and I also have my phone plugged into the Pi. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to install this on an SD card and get everything set up. It's fairly easy to do. If you've ever flashed an image for the Raspberry Pi, you shouldn't have any trouble with this. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and install this. It's really simple to do, but first, you're gonna need a few things. You will need a Raspberry Pi 3. They're $35.87 on Amazon right now just for the Pi, or you can get a kit. I'll leave all links in the description. Next up, You'll need some sort of touchscreen. I recommend the Raspberry Pi 7-inch touchscreen display. This is the official Raspberry Pi touchscreen display. $69.98. You can also go with something a little bit cheaper like I have. The Lanzo 7-inch touchscreen works great, but with this one here, all your wires will be hidden because everything sits behind the screen. Really nice little setup here. Next thing we'll need is an SD card. I already have mine inserted into my PC. We're gonna go and download Etcher. This works for Windows, Mac, or Linux, so whatever operating system you're running, got you covered here. I just downloaded the Windows X64 portable version. Place it on my desktop. And finally, we need to head over to GitHub and get Crankshaft. This is by H Throng or Hong Throng. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. If not, sorry about that. Go ahead and read through this. There are a few things that aren't working. There's a few things that will be fixed in the future. And I have heard rumor that Bluetooth will be fixed within the next week or two. We're gonna download it, go to releases, and we'll download Crankshaft. He updated this 13 hours ago. We're gonna leave this zip because Etcher's gonna take care of unzipping it and flashing it to our SD card. I have Crankshaft downloaded here, left it zip like I mentioned and I have Etcher Portable. We're gonna start up Etcher. We're gonna select the image. Mine's on my desktop. Right here, crankshaft. Double click. Make sure you have your SD card chosen. Etcher is really good about choosing the correct device, but make sure. And click flash. It'll take a few minutes. Let it finish up. It's going to flash it, then verify the files, and we can move back over to the Raspberry Pi. All right, so Etcher finished up. I just unplugged my SD card and plugged it back in. I can now see my boot directory. I'm going to go in here to my config.txt, and I'm going to open it with Notepad++. I'm using a 7-inch screen, so I need to add a couple lines here. Got a little text document. I'll leave it in the description just in case you need this. I'm just going to paste it right at the bottom. This is just going to allow us to use that screen correctly. File, save. Now we can take the SD card, place it in our Raspberry Pi 3, plug in our touch screen, and boot it up. All right, so now that you have the SD card flashed, it's time to get everything set up. Here's my Raspberry Pi 3. I have the HDMI connected to my 7-inch touch screen. I also have a USB cable connected to control the touch on the screen itself. USB Type-C cable to my Android phone, 3.5 millimeter audio jack out to the speaker itself. Now Bluetooth is not working in this build yet, but it will be fixed in the next week or two. I'm gonna put my SD card in, 
and power up the Raspberry Pi 3. Now the first boot could take a little while, it could take up to two minutes. You'll get a solid red light and a flashing green light. I've already booted this up one time, so it's gonna boot a little quicker than yours. If everything goes correctly, you should get the crankshaft splash screen, and you'll be presented with this screen here. There's a lot of settings in here we can change. General, audio, video, all kinds of good stuff, but I'm gonna leave it stock for now. All we need to do is make sure we have Android Auto installed on our Android phone. Plug it in, wait a second, and Android Auto will start on the Raspberry Pi 3. The main question I'm gonna get is why do you wanna do this when you can just run it on your phone or a tablet? First off, because we can. Second, because we love Raspberry Pis. Like I mentioned, as of making this video right now, the Bluetooth is not working, but it should be fixed within the next week or so. I just ordered the official 7-inch touchscreen for the Raspberry Pi, and I'm definitely going to be setting this up in my car. I don't have navigation built in, but I do have, you know, a Bluetooth audio system. So everything will be pumped through my audio system in the car. I think this is a cool little setup here. I mean, it's easy to make, it's pretty inexpensive, and it's a nice little project to do on the weekend. In all honesty, it is pretty pointless, given you already have Android Auto running on your phone or your tablet. But if you're into the Raspberry Pis and you like tinkering, this is a cool little project for you to do. So if you're interested in building something like this and you need some parts, I've left Amazon links down below. Everything I have here, plus some stuff that I've ordered. I will be doing another video on this as soon as Bluetooth is fixed because I definitely want to show you this setup inside of my car. So that's it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. If you could, hit that like button and subscribe. I've also left all the links for all the software in the description below. And like always, thanks for watching.